Here are 10 terms that all new skateboarders should know. This list is aimed at those who are new to the board and may have heard some terms they're not familiar with. Up first, we have a pretty easy one with regular and goofy. If you skate with your left foot forward towards the nose while you're rolling, then you skate regular. Whether you push regular or mongo, just know that left foot forward means you skate regular. So naturally, if you prefer to do the opposite and skate with your right foot forward, that means you skate goofy. So this is a really easy one, but I've seen some brand new skateboarders get confused when it comes to stance. And speaking of stance, at number two we have nollie, switch, and fakie. So I'm gonna explain this one from the starting point of a regular stance skater. So if this is how you normally skate, then this is just regular footing like we just said. Now if you stay facing the same way, but you step forward onto the nose of your board, this is called nollie, because you'd be doing an ollie off the nose, or a nose ollie, or a nollie. Now if you normally skate regular, but then you change it up and start to skate goofy, that means that you're skating switch, because you've switched your stance from regular to goofy. And then finally, if you're standing switch and you step up to the nose of your board, you would now be in fakie position, which I guess you could think of in your head as either a switch nollie or just riding backwards and doing an ollie. So these are pretty easy concepts that you should be able to get down. And just remember that if you skate goofy normally, then all of this is gonna be reversed for you. Next up, we have pop. Now this one can technically mean one of two things. The first one being the amount of life left in the tail of your skateboard, which will diminish the more that the tail gets worn away, causing you to have lower ollies. But we're gonna talk about the other kind of pop, which is literally just when you hit your tail against the ground. In almost every trick tip, you'll hear someone say that you have to pop the tail off the ground, or that you need to pop your tail in a certain way or a certain height in order to do a trick. Well, pop is what happens when you slam down on the tail or the nose of your board, hitting it against the ground and causing it to fly up into the air. This is the key concept behind ollies, 180s, pop shove and pretty much every flip trick. And it's all about mastering the perfect balance of timing between slamming the tail down, letting it pop off the ground, but then also jumping at the same time and letting the board lift up into the air. Next up, we have a term associated with pretty much every flip trick, which is flick. Flick is a certain type of motion done by one of your feet which causes the board to flip over. Some beginners can get a little confused because they think that for a kickflip, you just pop the tail and then kick the board. But there's a little bit more to flick than just kicking outward. I would say that flick actually consists of about three little parts. The first would be when your foot is sliding up the board and it's turned over sideways, almost like you rolled your ankle. The second part, which is the most important part, your foot comes to the edge of either the nose or the tail of your board and it quickly flicks outward which is essentially just pushing out with your toes and straightening your foot back up. And then the final part is just following through with that foot to make sure that you gave it enough power with the flick. Understanding this concept of flick is really what's gonna open up the world of flip tricks for you. And just know that once you have this down, it's not really something that you have to break down and think about when you're doing something like a kick flip. It kind of becomes second nature and you'll just naturally know how to flick your foot off the side of the board. Up next, we have the pocket. This is one you'll hear a lot of in how-to videos, especially when it comes to something like a 360 flip. So the pocket of your board is right here. It's this little area in between the center part of your board and the nose or the tail where the board sort of dips down a little bit. And it's basically a little part on your board that's used as leverage when you're going to turn or flip the board in certain ways. So when someone says to put your foot in the pocket, they're probably talking about that little rounded out area by the nose or the tail. And speaking of pockets, term number six is something that's pretty closely related, and that would be scoop. Scooping is a type of motion, usually done with your back foot, that quickly causes the board to rotate in a 180, 360, 540, or beyond kind of rotation. And it's probably the term you'll hear most often when you're trying to learn a 360 flip. Scooping is done basically by putting your foot in the back pocket, and depending on what trick you're doing, you can slightly hang your toes off the edge of the board to kind of grab the side of the pocket. And then the reason it's called scoop is because instead of completely pressing down and popping the tail like you would for an ollie or a kickflip, you're adding in this lateral scooping motion where your toes sort of hang over the edge of the pocket and grab the side of the board in order to pull sideways and cause the board to rotate. This is a concept that's sort of hard to new skaters as they try to scoop without having their foot far enough in the pocket. So just know that when you go and try and scoop the board, you wanna have your foot in the pocket with your toes almost feeling like they're gonna grab the edge of the board. 
And then as you slightly press down, at the same time, you pull your toes behind you in order to cause the board to rotate. And just keep in mind that scooping isn't just for 360 flips. Coming up next, we have the sex change or body burial. Now, I just wanted to throw this one in here really quick because if I was a brand new skater and I heard the term sex change, I think that I might be a little confused. So remember earlier when we talked about stance and riding either regular or goofy? Well, in skateboarding, you can equate stance to sex so that if you ride regular and then you quickly jump and turn your body to ride goofy, you just did a stance change or in skateboarding terms, you did a sex change. And another word for this that means the same thing is body varial. And remember that you can do a sex change by itself with an ollie, with a kickflip, or pretty much almost any trick. At number eight, we have front side and back side rotation. Now this one's a whole thing that I'm not gonna get really far into because I already did a video on this. So I'll just give you one simple memory hack. Just remember the acronym WASOY BY FOD FOB, which just stands for whichever side of your body is facing outward determines front side or back side, except for fakie. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you some 180s and depending on which side of my body is facing outward when I rotate, we're gonna determine if they're front side or back side. So here I'm skating regular and I pop and turn and the front side is facing the camera, so it's front side. And now skating regular and I pop and turn and my back is facing the camera, so it's back side. Now I'm skating nollie and I pop and my back is facing the camera, so it's back side. And Nolly seems to be the one that people mix up the most, but just keep in mind it follows the same formula as the others. So switch follows the same rule, I pop and turn and it's front side. And finally for fakie, for some scientific reason that I don't know, I pop and turn and even though my back is on the outside, it's front side. So it's best to just think of fakie as having the same front side and back side rules as skating regular, except you happen to be rolling backwards. I'll leave a link and a card to one of my quick tip videos where I talk more about this front side and back side stuff. Coming up next, we have more front side, back side with front side and back side grinds. Now this one's easy and isn't too complicated at first. Basically, when you're rolling at an object that you're gonna grind, if it's on your front side, then yep, you guessed it, it's gonna be a front side grind. And conversely, if you're rolling and it's behind you, then it's gonna be back side. Now, if you're doing straight up grinds and slides, this should pretty much apply across the board. But keep in mind, things can get a little complicated once you start doing frontside 185 O's or Nolly 270 lip slides. And finally, for our 10th term, which is actually a collection of little terms, we have skateboard parts. Now, I'm going to go over this very briefly because you can find this information all over the internet. So we have the main part of your board, which is obviously your deck. Then we have the coarse gritty stuff on the top of your deck which helps your feet stick to it, which is called grip tape. So please don't call this one sandpaper, even though it really is just sandpaper essentially. And then you got your trucks. These suckers are the thing that attach the wheels to your board and also allow you to grind and turn. And up next we have the wheels. These little polyurethane donuts are what let you roll across the ground. They come in different hardnesses and sizes, but we'll save that for another video. So your wheels would be useless if you didn't have bearings. These are the little metal circular things that go inside of your wheels which allow them to spin on your truck. You just pop them in, throw them on, and get rolling. Next up we have your hardware or your bolts. These are the set of eight little cute nuts and bolts that attach your trucks to your deck, which is actually pretty darn important. And then finally you attach all these things together and screw them in, tighten them up, and you have yourself a skateboard. So there you have my brief overview of skateboard terminology that every beginner should probably know. Not only can they give you a better understanding of how a skateboard works or how to perform a certain trick, but hopefully in the end it can help make you a better skater just by adding to your knowledge and giving you a foundation for all the crazy skate information you'll have in your brain someday. So I would maybe suggest going and watching the 10 things every beginner skateboarder should know video. I feel like if you're a new skateboarder, it can kind of go hand in hand with this video to just give you a jumping off point to get you into the whole skateboarding world. So anyway, besides all that, I'd like to thank you for watching and you can like and subscribe if you want.